or with me now is Dr. Marcos Papadopoulos, editor of Politics First and an expert on Russia. Uh, do you think this country is Russophobic? What can I say, first of all, the House of Commons debate uh, demonstrated just how uh, MPs are deluded, uninformed and, quite frankly, biased when it comes to the conflict in Syria. And the only people who are benefiting from that ignorance and delusion are Islamist terrorists in Aleppo and elsewhere in Syria. And we must remember that those Islamist terrorists who are receiving the backing of the West pose a terrible threat to the British public and they want to carry out scores of London-style bombings. But when we talk about Russophobia, certainly uh, Russophobia, racism towards Russia, has a long history in Britain. It goes back even to the uh, Crimean War, and it was there during the First World War and even during the Second World War. And Boris Johnson's uh, comments, his call for protests outside the Russian embassy, not only contravene diplomatic protocols, but they're, uh, quite frankly speaking, they're very dangerous because they are encouraging hostility towards uh, the Russian diplomats and uh, the Russian diplomats' families. And if any harm comes to a Russian diplomat or his or her uh, wife or husband, then Boris Johnson ultimately will be responsible. It was interesting yesterday, just after Boris Johnson made those comments, how the Russian embassy in London reacted and what it had to say basically was, well, Russia can point to what it's done in Syria, you may argue with it, but what's Britain done? Well, uh, the Russian military campaign in Syria, which began over a year ago, is being carried out uh, in accordance with international law. Why do I say that? Because the Syrian government, uh, led by President Assad, which is the only legitimate authority uh, in Syria, and that is in line with uh, the UN Charter and international law in general, called for assistance from the Russian military. Now, the US-led coalition in Syria, uh, which of course includes Britain, is not acting legally. And the Russian military campaign has helped the Syrian army to liberate much of Syrian territory, you know the, which was controlled by Islamist terrorists. You know the argument against that, and that is that mm. Russia is, is, is committing war crimes in, East, in eastern Aleppo, uh, and it is breaking every convention you, you say they are actually yeah, I mean, I, I, I would dispute that because uh, uh, Western governments are citing reports, for example, from what is known as the White Helmets in Syria. Now, the White Helmets officially portray themselves as rescue workers. In reality, they are actually Islamist fighters themselves. There are numerous photos, there are footage of these White Helmets firing RPGs, firing Kalashnikovs, and posing with the bodies of dead Syrian soldiers and uh, dead Syrian civilians in Aleppo. We were hearing in, in Richard Galpin's report there from John Soares, former head of MI6, that uh, a no-fly zone, frankly, is unworkable. <clears throat> How would you assess the state of UK-Russian relations today? The state of relations between London and Moscow are absolutely dreadful, and that is because, in part, uh, Britain does have a very suspicious, hostile attitude towards Russia, historically, and I think also Britain feels left out uh, in Syria. The main two outside forces acting in Syria is, of course, uh, Russia and America, and I think Britain feels, uh, as I said, quite left out and is resorting to some, uh, quite frankly speaking, disgraceful means. For example, encouraging protests outside the Russian embassy, and the Russian embassy is, as I said, completely right uh, to complain about that. The perception that many in the West have that this is President Putin, no one else, he's in charge, he has huge military might and he's out to, sh to use it. No, Russia is acting to defend international law because the Syrian government is the only legitimate authority in Syria and it's being threatened by terrorist terrorists who are ideologically speaking the same people who carried out the London bombings, the Paris bombings, the Brussels bombings. And also Russia is acting out of self-defense because it knows that if Damascus should fall to an Islamist group in Syria, be it ISIS, be it al-Nusra, be it the so-called Free Syrian Army, then that would pose a tremendous threat to Russia because Russia's southern borders are not far from Syria. Marcus Papadopoulos, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.